Okay, Ravi. Hello, <clears throat> I am Ravi Mahajan from Intel Corporation. Uh, for the past two years, I've been privileged to chair the Alan Krauss Thermal Management Selection Committee. The Alan Krauss Medal winner is selected from an extremely competitive group of some of the highest achievers in the field. The task of selecting medal recipients has been made possible by the active participation of a distinguished panel. The selection for this particular award comprised of, uh, the selection committee comprised of Suresh Garimela, president of the University of Vermont, Peter de Bock from GE Global Research, Amy Fleischer from Cal Poly, Marta Renz from the University of well, Budapest University, and Yogendra Zoshi from Georgia Tech. I am both honored and saddened to announce this year's winner and a personal friend, Mike Ellsworth. Dereji, if you wouldn't move to the next slide. The agenda, the, the Alan Krauss Medal, let me just give a little bit of background so that I highlight the tremendous accomplishment we recognize. The Alan Krauss Thermal Management Medal recognizes an individual who has demonstrated outstanding achievements in thermal management of electronic systems and his or her commitment to the field of thermal science and engineering. The nominee for the award should have made significant contributions in thermal management of electronic systems demonstrated by successful product development, seminal papers, filed patents, and or leadership of research and development programs. The award itself was established in 1994 by the Electronics and Photonics Packaging Division of ASME, operated as a divisional award until 2009, at which point it was elevated to become a society award and was named after a very distinguished researcher, Alan Krauss. The point of this preamble is that this is a highly, highly competitive award and is awarded to among the highest achievers in our field. And it is usually a, it is a matter of tremendous pride to have received this. If you go to the next slide. And as I said, I am both honored and saddened that today's winner, Mike Ellsworth, who I considered a friend and a collaborator is not here. Uh, Mike Joseph Ellsworth has been awarded the Alan Krauss, the 2020 Alan Krauss Medal for his expertise in the field of electronics thermal management from chip to system to data centers, and in particular, liquid and refrigeration cooling that resulted in 294 filed patents and 49th invention plateau. And those numbers should sink in. If you go to the next slide, Dereji. Mike Ellsworth, ASME Fellow since 2005, is a recognized expert in the field of electronics thermal management, ranging across all levels, chip to system to data centers. Technical manager of the Advanced Thermal Energy Efficiency Lab, which he led, and he demonstrated innovation and the development of future cooling concepts. And the number that should strike everybody, 294 filed patents a record for IBM Poughkeepsie and at the 49th Invention Plateau. Mike made sustained technical and leadership contributions for cooling IBM's e-server products, utilizing a variety of cooling technologies, including air, air-liquid hybrid, liquid, heat pipe, vapor chamber, and refrigeration. If you go to the next slide, Reggie, please. You know, uh, let me tell you the, this story because to me it highlights the value Mike brought to our, uh, to our uh, community. You know, he always worked for the good of our community and not for himself. And this is, this is why, you know, when the lights were off, you saw him working diligently, thoroughly, and with intense dedication. There are so many things that are there to admire him. I always thought his dedication was truly commendable you know, especially in driving the success of this very conference we are all in today. In 2013, I worked with him on that uh, Interpac conference. And at that time, we held it in Burlingame, California. It, is a new, it was a new and somewhat offbeat venue. So I was worried about turnout. 
but you know, the day I showed up in Berlingham, there were people there. It was, you know, it was fantastic. You never felt that this was an offbeat uh, conference. And typical Mike, he pulled it off. Uh, and the next year, I happened to have dinner with him. And we were standing out, uh, you know, uh, talking on the side. And he finally described to me what it took for him to make the conference happen. Uh, attendees of Interpac should be really proud of Mike. He's a major reason why Interpac is the success it is. Uh, I want to use this time to personally acknowledge his contributions. Uh, we don't often, as engineers, say thank you. You know, we just sort of deal with life as a matter of fact parade of events. Uh, but I would like Mike to know and his family to know that we are truly, truly indebted to him. And I cannot tell you how saddened I am uh, that he's not here with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi, for that beautiful tribute. Now I'll read a tribute from Bhagat Samakia, who is not able to attend because of a conflict. Mike was a colleague and a friend. I've always regarded him as a thought leader in the field, a colleague, a colleague and a friend. I have a framed picture in my office of Mike handing me the ASME clock award from when he was the president of the K-16 committee. I may forget about the clock and the award, but I'll always remember Mike as a friend, but God. Uh, Pete, please take over. Hey, thanks to Reggie. Hey. Mike was a great friend and colleague, and I've known him for more than 20 years, but over the past five years or so, I, I really got to work with him on almost a daily basis. So I got to know him very well, both as a friend and as a colleague. And I can say that Mike truly loved his work. He was passionate about electronics cooling. And with his illness, he kept active and engaged as long as he possibly could. You know, and clearly Mike had the option to work or not after his diagnosis, but you know, both Mike and, and his wife, Janet, who I kept in close uh, touch with throughout his illness, you know, said that Mike loved his work and it gave him strength and he wanted to keep involved and keep contributing, and he did. And Mike really fought his cancer with just remarkable courage, dignity, and positive attitude. You know, clearly Mike was a big part of our, you know, our IBM community and he made profound contributions to our cooling technologies. But I think, you know, maybe even more importantly, Mike had the drive and initiative to share that passion with so many external industry leadership roles, right? On, of course, Interpac, iTherm, ASHRAE, Green Grid, and the list goes on and on, you know, with years of active leadership roles, papers, and publications. Mike's contributions to, you know, to IBM's cooling technologies was huge with advancements in indirect liquid cooling, like the rear door heat exchanger, direct water cooling, cold plate technology, water jet impingement, thermoelectrics, and, and many others. I think the, the, one of the most important product, uh, IBM product things that he, and I think one of the things that he was most personally uh, uh, proud of was his role as the lead thermal engineer on IBM's Power 775 uh, supercomputer and, his, and the predecessor to that. The P775 was a remarkable cooling challenge with 100% of the heat load going to water um, and on heat loads up to 270 kW. It was really groundbreaking cooling solutions. Um, Mike also provided technical leadership to our ATL, our Advanced Thermal Energy Efficiency Laboratory team, a role that he picked up uh, with Roger Schmidt's retirement from IBM. And Mike provided technical leadership to our advanced thermal efforts as well as really made significant contributions to our cross-brand collaboration. And as was mentioned earlier, in, in, internal to IBM, Mike's 300 plus patents and achieving his 74th invention plateau internal to IBM are metrics that really speak for themselves, really truly impressive stuff. On invention, Mike also chaired IBM's master inventor program, which identified and recognized our top inventors. And he took time to mentor many inventors as well. And as for mentoring, he also mentored many of our new thermal engineers, providing ongoing guidance that really helped shape the terrific team that, that we have now. Mike was also called upon many times to lead or provide consultation on difficult task force efforts internal to IBM. These were situations that had very difficult technical challenges and were usually all tangled up with difficult business and supply chain issues. And Mike was able to pull the teams together and get the problem solved. Mike was also chair of our corporate cooling council for several years, another role he picked up from Roger, and did a great job leading ongoing meetings and a yearly workshop that really helped pull together our IBM thermal community. So 
I worked with Mike for, for many years and I had a great appreciation for his technical leadership, his innovation and, and the friendship that we shared. But I think, you know, personally, the thing that I'll remember most about Mike was the remarkable courage, dignity and positive attitude, you know, and continued friendship and collaboration that he shared to the end, you know, through his really you know, unspeakable hardship showed his true character. And it was really a remarkable character. So I think when we're all faced with difficult challenges in life, I think Mike is a great role model to reflect on uh, and, and he will be missed. So with that, let me, let me uh, pass it along here. Uh, thank you so much, Pete. Uh, Roger? Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. First to Janet and all of Mike's family, from my family and IBM family to yours, our deepest sympathy. We are here to celebrate uh, Mike's life, and Mike would have preferred that it, it was way too soon. We've lost a good friend, lost a champion. I worked at IBM and have known Mike probably for about 25 years or more. I looked back in my records and found the first paper we authored together in 1998. It's a paper on mainframe packaging of the CMOS technology. Picked a few other papers and patents as shown here, and we co-authored with uh, many others. In our many discussions of his area that he preferred to work in, it was definitely liquid cooling. He, he wanted to be the thermal lead in this area, and he knew this was going to be used in the future, more in the future, and technology that would be needed. So he wasn't shy in making this known, that he looked for these opportunities and cherished the occasion where he could showcase his leadership skills. Uh, two examples on the next slide. Um, this slide is uh, one such position that he that he held in 2014-15. Uh, he was all, already deeply involved in other organizations, that, as Pete mentioned, but he wanted to get more involved in ASHRAE. So we talked about the first edition of the liquid cooling book and expressed his desire to lead the update. We he, he probably led this with, I'm say, 15 to 20 people from companies like Intel, HP, Dell, Cisco, and so forth. And he led the overall revision of this book, which is about 100 pages. And the book that is beginning more and more popular in the industry now as liquid cooling is becoming more deployed through IT equipment. This was the 2015 book, and we discussed probably two years ago about updating this book for the third edition, and he wanted again to take the lead, which would have happened. Mike stepped forward on these occasions. Unfortunately, we didn't get started on the third edition since we were finishing up two other white papers at the time. But again, he stepped up to take the lead. Uh, the next chart is his Interpac presentation in 2015. Uh, again, an excellent presentation on liquid cooling. I teach a course now at uh, Syracuse University about data centers, and I want people from outside in the industry to talk to the class. And I wanted Mike to discuss liquid cooling, and he quickly agreed to present. But I thought since it's a four-hour drive from where we live here in Poughkeepsie to Syracuse, I was thinking we could videotape him in Poughkeepsie and he could also give a tour of some of the liquid cooling projects in the lab. So he agreed and our video team from SU drove down for the day. I told our SU team to plan on an hour, hour and a half here. Uh, after about three hours plus, <laughs> they were still going strong. The team came back saying, this guy really likes to talk about liquid cooling. Boy, did we learn a lot. That was Mike is at his best. He loved it. Next chart, um, I was very fortunate to have had the opportunity to work with him. He was a brilliant engineer, enjoyed solving problems. He wanted to be in a technical leadership position and enjoyed working with other engineers. He was a role model, model and widely respected inside and outside IBM. He will be missed both from his IBM family and our professional community at large. We've lost a good friend. During the last few months when he was still working at IBM, I would go over a visit with him and we would meet in Dick Chu's conference room where we had hundreds of meetings over the years. It felt comfortable to both of us being in the room. And during these visits, he never once complained. We always, he was always upbeat. And I felt 
He was trying to make me feel comfortable with the situation. What an inspiration. I will never forget those visits. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Roger. I do. Yeah. Um, I've known Mike for 17 years, and the first uh, nine of those years was in IBM Poughkeepsie. Um, he was a terrific inventor, a uh, real superb engineer, and he was definitely a teacher and a mentor for me and, of course, a friend as well. So I'm going to miss him very much, and my uh, deepest condolences uh, to Janet and uh, Mike's family. Uh, I'm going to show a couple, two or three slides that is not on directly on the liquid cooling work uh, that he led so uh, successfully at IBM, but some of his industry research contributions. Uh, what's shown here is a electronics cooling magazine uh, paper. This has actually got a distribution of close to 25,000 people, uh, in case you're wondering. And it's a pretty terrific uh, view of the electronics cooling advanced um, thermal technology space, uh, which is shown on the right. Um, and I've actually seen it used uh, quite frequently, and I've used, used it myself as well over the years. Yeah. Next slide. This is work that uh, Mike and Levi Campbell and many other folks did at, at IBM, a, a joint advanced cooling program of directly getting water on the chip, uh, very much ahead of its time, um, almost 15, 20 years or more ahead of its time. And I remember him being extremely passionate about doing breakthrough work. He got really excited really motivated and really drove this work forward uh, with, with Levi. And uh, it was a really exciting project to watch. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is work that, uh, of course, uh, Roger, Mike, and many others contributed to. Uh, I've added it here because the simulations on the right-hand side were modeling simulations that I did working very closely with Mike. And um, it was my first taste of doing some really exciting technical work uh, that was also got visibility with Mike's help and was also very useful in uh, making a case uh, for this innovative product to get into the marketplace. Yeah. Next slide. Uh, I was lucky enough to visit uh, the Hudson Valley a year ago uh, in the August time frame, and was able to bring most of the gang together to have lunch. Uh, it was me and my daughter, who you see on the right. I was so happy that Mike was able to join and spend that time with us, and it was really great to have uh, great to have that lunch. Um, I do want to mention one thing about Mike. Uh, what made him such a superb inventor was he had a knack for knowing what was patentable and novel. And that's not an easy thing. And almost always, if he thought something was patentable and novel, uh, we always ended up getting a patent for it from the US uh, Patent Office. And uh, that that was pretty, pretty, pretty great skill. Uh, but. Uh, thanks, Mike, for everything, and I will definitely miss you. Thanks, Dereji. Thanks, Madhu. Uh, first, uh, my condolences to uh, Janet uh, uh, and her family. Uh, I want to start off with this slide, which shows Mike uh, giving a presentation at, at UTA. Uh, he has given several presentations there. But more than anything else, he's talked numerous times to our graduate students. He was a mentor. We probably looked at him as the, uh, uh, you know, one of the premier guys in liquid cooling. So my students certainly shared a lot of time with him. And uh, last year in 2019, uh, he received an award uh, for really his outstanding work in liquid cooling. Uh, it was a special track uh, that was chaired by uh, Saket and uh, Tim Chainer and 
uh, uh, Barris and uh, Joshua Guess. And it was really an outstanding uh, track and um, a liquid cooling. And uh, we were very fortunate to, to sponsor that. And that's uh, actually Team Chainer there receiving uh, the, uh, the award on his behalf. So I'll make this uh, quick uh, so uh, Janet can take over. So on a personal basis, Mike was really a dear friend with whom I worked uh, in the same lab for several years before I left IBM. And then he became even uh, a, a closer friend. He was like a younger brother to me. In fact, uh, Janet, the uh, name I used for Mike was Mike E. Uh, so at conferences, we always set up a time. Every single time he was at a conference, him and I will have lunch or dinner uh, and catch up. He always talked about his love and admiration of his wife, Janet, and was very proud of his uh, wonderful daughters and their accomplishments, uh, Kathleen and Rebecca. Uh, Mike was brilliant, a family man, and, uh, and a superb citizen. Uh, we'll always miss you, uh, entire community, and may God bless your soul. Janet? Okay. Thank you, Dereji. Thank you very much. Um, so I wanted to proudly, very proudly accept this award on Mike's behalf. Um, of course, you all have not made it easy for me not to cry with all of these wonderful things that you've said about him. Not so sure if I should have been put at the end or not, but really um, just, just lovely, lovely things from so many people that I either know personally or have heard about so much over the years from Mike. Um, so I also I wanna let you know that our daughter, as you know, uh, our daughters Kathleen and Becca are here as well. Um, as well as Mike's parents, uh, Barbara and Mike Sr., and Mike's brother, Rob. So it's great that we're all here to hear these wonderful things. Um, so I wanted to say a few things. Uh, so Mike received news um, that he would get this award not that long before he passed um, away, and it made him just very, very happy. You have no idea just how happy he was to have gotten this award. Um, it was just such a great thing that it was, he was able to know about it. Um, you know, at least I think it was about a couple of months before he passed away. Uh, he truly considered it a great honor. Um, he was a really humble guy for those of you who know knew him well. He would just be amazed at all these great things that um, that have been said about him here and, you know, in, in other venues. Um, so and I also want to thank all of you that worked so hard to nominate him for this award. It really meant uh, so much. Uh, his management team at IBM was also very good about recognizing him for this. Um, and Pete Kelly, I just want to say a special thanks because you were a big part of that. Mike was definitely an extremely smart guy and uh, he loved the field of thermal engineering. And I loved uh, what Roger said about Mike loving to talk about liquid cooling because he did like to talk about it a lot <laughs> and try to explain a new idea to me. And I would try to uh, keep up, but it was, it was never easy. Uh, he had so many patents, as you know, um, and I know people like Dick Chu and you, Roger, Roger Schmidt, were such inspirations for him working throughout his career. Uh, I do want to say a few personal items about Mike's. Uh, he, uh, in addition to working so hard at his engineering work, Mike and I were able to be happily married for 31 years. Uh, he also raised two absolutely wonderful daughters that he was so proud of and would talk about all the time. Kathleen is a CPA in Washington, D.C., and Becca, who also works for IBM in Austin, Texas, as a user experience designer. Uh, he loved, Mike loved being a father. Uh, they made him so proud, his daughters, and gave him such joy. In addition to his family and his work, he did have some other great loves. Uh, his love of scotch was well known uh, with his family and friends. He would always try to bring really good uh, scotch over and try to get people to drink it, uh, you know, so with a lot of success. He was also a huge New York Mets and New York Giants fan. Uh, but, you know, of course, that, the, the love of those teams also brings a lot of exasperation because they don't win a lot. Uh, but we went to a lot of New York Mets games together as a family. And last December, we actually got a chance to go to a, a Giants game together as well. I mean, they lost, of course, but still we enjoyed the game. And uh, one of the other things he was well known for with his friends and family was his great iTunes playlist. Uh, he had a lot of great rock songs on there and other interesting songs like uh, Partridge Family and Helen Reddy and some other songs that you wouldn't expect coming out of the 
after you heard just a lot of great rock songs from Queen and Sticks and everything else. So he was definitely a big, uh, a big lover of music and uh, everybody loved all the songs that he used to play at family and, and fam family friends get togethers. He was also an expert skier. Uh, he loved to go skiing out West uh, with his friends each year. And that was another big thing that, you know, one of his loves when he was working. Uh, as I think of some of you have alluded, Mike was just unbelievably brave with his diagnosis. Uh, throughout, he was always positive and complaining. And, you know, he's, I know people have said that here. He was like that at home as well. Um, and I like to tell people, you know, he didn't spend his last 20 months dying from cancer. He really lived it showing us how to live with cancer as fully as possible. Um, and so it's so wonderful that we get to um, celebrate his life. And uh, Dereji, I also want to say a special thank you to you uh, for all you have done with this award and helping helping coordinate everything. Uh, I know Mike considered you a very special friend, um, and you know he would just be you know just honored that you you were talking about him and 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 helping put some of this tribute together. So I know we all wish Mike was here to accept the award himself. Nobody more than me, but um, I know uh, he would want me to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for giving him this recognition and to let you know just how much it meant to him. To, and I'm so happy he knew about it, um, at least for quite a while before he passed away. It was just wonderful. Um, I just wanna, I think, I know our daughters are, I just wanna say a very quick hello and thank you. Um, Kathleen, you just wanna say something? Yeah, I can speak really, just a quick thing. Um, just to echo what my mom just said, I wanted to thank you all for honoring my father today he loved his work. Um, he was really proud of all of his achievements, especially this award. Um, and he would be really touched by all of your kind words today. So again, thank you. Great, thanks. Honey, uh, Becca, you wanna say something? Yes, um, again, yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, and for all the tributes and letting us see into a part of his life that Kathleen and I <laughs> didn't always see because we were at school, he was up at work. <laughs> so thanks for those personal stories. So definitely stay with us, thanks. Thanks, honey. Okay, Dereji, um, I think I'll hand it, the baton back to you. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, at this stage, I wanna thank everyone that attended. Uh, I wanna especially thank uh, Ravi and the selection committee for giving this award to, to Mike. But I especially wanna thank uh, Janet and her family for, for being here. And we love you all. and. Uh, uh, Mike will always uh, be part of the community. I can tell you, he might have passed away, but uh, uh, his legacy continues. Like my graduate students, I can tell you right now, are reading his papers, are uh, <laughs> following him uh, seriously because uh, I say, don't don't go uh, doing literature search. Just look at his patents and stuff as a start. Then if something is missing, you can continue. So uh, thank you uh, very much. It was really a pleasure.